So what, what's point creep? It's exactly what it is. It's points creeping slowly, year after year after year after year. <laughs> Easiest way I could like think of it like a kin it to would be like an hourglass. Like you flip it over and you know you have all that sand, which is your applicants, piled up on top and they're just kind of trickling through every year. But you just have this buildup of people and points that just continually build up behind the 10 points that are trickling out every year. And it it's, just It's basically a shortage of tags and surplus of applicants. So anytime the, the supply is less than the demand, if you will, you're gonna, it's going to carry over year to year. And some hunts, it is terrible and you'll never catch. Some hunts, it's minimal. Like a 52, Colorado 52 muzzler hunt. It's pretty solid for a non-resident at that two-point level. It doesn't creep much year to year. The supply and demand kind of levels right at that two-point level, whereas you take bears on a strip for a non-resident, if you're not max point like you won't live long enough to catch that that max point level mm -hmm. um so there's not enough permits to meet the demand of the number of people that are interested in hunting for that hunt which causes point creep so it's essentially you're saying it takes one additional point every single year to, to draw that permit and if you're even, below that line you may I, never catch it yeah i wouldn't even label it as that because in my opinion you've got points creep in states that have a bonus point system nevada you notice points creep as well those your odds at a given point level get worse over time so say you you take a odds percentage of 10 percent well that 10 percent may may creep from five points to six points to seven points to eight points to ten points and so your odds get worse the further we get in it's the same situation in a, in a bonus point state you you just have a lower odds at a given point level year over year or i would even say you have a version it's not really a points creep in a state like new mexico or idaho that doesn't have a point space but you see the same hunt that is trend your odds are trending down over time so like a you know in a second second archery hunt in a given unit unit 45 for example 45 Archery elk hunt, second the 14th, 14th to whatever. 14th to the 25th. That hunt five years ago, you know, 15%, slowly is creeping down to under 10% now. Right. So I think points, like we throw points creep out there in, in typically a preference point system, but I think it applies to all draw systems across the West, to be honest with you. And it's just, just a decrease in odds over time as, as more people are interested in, in hunting yep. any given unit. And uh, you see it a lot in like units that get hot. You know, you'll have a unit, somebody kills a, a nice buck or a bull and, you know, has a good experience and maybe they get some, some Instagram time or some social media and you'll see that unit take a bump, you know, for a number of years. And yep. I, I, it, it doesn't always have to be a... Uh, you know, popularity thing. Yeah. Say a winter kill goes through and yeah. and kills, you know, the yeah, they cut permits in half. Well, now that that particular hunt that they cut permits in is going to creep just because the demand the demand is still there. The supply got cut in half, so it's it's going to creep as well. It's always interesting to me too. Like you look at a state with like a, like a bonus point system, like Montana. And like you look at like like trophy species that people don't necessarily care like where they're hunting them at they just want to hunt them like sheep or moose or anything like that and you'll see stuff like that where you have like a pile of applicants on one unit one year on one hunt and in one kind of got not undersubscribed just not near as many applicants and then the next year they'll flip-flop because everybody sees that there was less applicants so they'll jump like that that so i think is more accentuated in a second choice odds for antlerless you see that year yeah. in and year 100%. i call it i call it the teeter-totter it yeah it'll go it'll go 100 percent one year 10% the next year, 100% the next year, 10% the next year. And it's just people, they don't necessarily care where they're hunting a just cow elk. They just are, yep. Yeah. And let, because you're basing odds off of last year, last year a particular unit might be 100%. Well, yeah. the masses flow to a unit that had 100%. It gets, you know, and there again, the demand goes up. Supply stays the same. Yeah. Your odds get worse. So when we talk about point creep, like in the in the truest sense, most often I think we're talking about a preference point or a modified, you know, point system where a certain number of permits are given to applicants with the most points yeah. that apply and, for any given hunt, right? And I think it gets accentuated in that type of system. Okay. And what so like in your opinion, what states are the most susceptible to point creep in that sense? And, and and maybe even further beyond that, like how do you navigate that as a user? Personally, that that's where I go into my personal strategy. Colorado is one of those states you see points creep in, yeah. um, depending on the units. Arizona is one of those states. Any like you say, any any of them that have that type of point system. Utah is one. I've got good friends that have been chasing 
the Ponsagon archery tag for half a decade now. So I just, let me just clarify. So just for anybody that might be interested in listening, it's it's a system where a certain percentage or the permits for any given hunt are given to the people with the most points that apply for that hunt. Yep. So for example, you brought up Colorado. It's a, I, I, what I call a true preference point state for deer, elk, and antelope, right? Where yep. the, the people that have the most points that apply for any given hunt, they're guaranteed those permits. So nobody below that cutoff line, if you don't have the most points that applies for it, like you have no random chance of drawing, right? So that's why you see that that jump. But anyway, I would go on. So, and so with that in Colorado, when I'm, when I'm looking at a particular hunt, uh, and this is where, you know, we, we've talked about using draw odds. Um, I go to the detail page. When I find a hunt that I'm really interested in and, and it, it becomes a, a destination hunt for me on my app strategy may not be this year's app strategy maybe something that i'm building to hunt in the next five years I, I i pull up the detail page i look at that historical trend i use the history for that hunt um and then i look into it say say i you know there was a particular hunt 55 archery mm-hmm. gunnison basin two years ago they cut permits in half because of the winter kill it jumped from seven points to 12 points mm-hmm. so you if you didn't know the backstory to that you, you, you have no explanation, but because the demand didn't go up any, well, last year they, they reallocated the same number of permits they did two years ago, and, and you see the, the point level, the point break level come back down to that seven, eight points. And so there are anomalies like that, but I use that historical data to kind of see that trend, and that hunt hasn't, hasn't creeped a ton. When you, when you do a long look at it, barring some of those tag cuts, it's always been that seven, eight point level. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is bumping, you know, a fraction every year. But with that, I can, that, that's an obtainable hunt. I know once I hit that eight point level, you know, whether it's three years out or five years out, that's a hunt that I'm going to draw. So, like, if I'm trying to figure out, like, how, how can I hunt elk every year from here on out? And I know Wyoming's got to be in my mix at some point. You know, you look at, like, the Wyoming general tag jumping, like, a half a point, essentially, every year almost right now. I know that, you know, at that point level right now, when I get to that point, you know, another three years, I'm probably not going to draw that tag. I need to go on a little bit further than that, you know. Yeah, so that's a perfect example. Five years ago, that could have been a hunt that was on your radar every year, every, every year, other year. Every Depending year. on if you wanted to go in the special draw, you know, now, even even going into the special draw, it's, it's an every other or every two years two points yeah Yeah, it might be three by the time i mean i talked to a guy the other day on the phone and i think he had um you know four points and and he was looking at the limited quota hunts and saying what should i do and i said i don't know have you considered just the general season tag and he was like well if i if i burn my four points it's probably you know one more than i might potentially need to draw that general tag i mean aren't i giving up a point and i said yeah you could look at it like that but you could also look at it as like you're, you're giving yourself another opportunity to get back in the mix to potentially draw that tag by the time you roll back around again i mean that might be a five point hunt you know getting in that year we were talking about in the office what was it yesterday you said there's a 17 percent increase in applicants state agencies can only allocate so many permits you can only harvest so many animals off the landscape well if demand increases by 17 percent and you can't increase supply by 17 percent that's the root cause of this point screen that we're talking about yeah, and as we're getting like surrounding states, like the changes with Idaho this year just went ballistic, you know, and that creates more pressure on your surrounding states now. So as you can see those point levels, you know, like Montana has been fairly stable, but with that being a fairly new system with their preference point system on their combos and with, with stresses from surrounding states, you know, that could very easily start jumping too in the next couple yeah. of years. So point creep, when I think about it, I, I typically look at it as this like this negative thing, you know, that it's continually taking more points to draw. But in reality, I mean, that's just the nature of where we're at right now. It is, I don't I don't see it as negative at all. It's just the nature of the beast, if it, you will. It yeah. just I takes more look. creativity in exactly. your in your oh, yeah. overall strategy. Well, and, and to me too, and again, this kind of goes back to like what we're talking about, like everybody's individual aspirations on a hunt, yeah. you know. But for me, I'm I'm not at a stage yet in my life or you know my hunting career or whatever where I'm looking for top tier animals. I just I'm looking for adventure and, and experiences and punch tags and that kind of thing um and and point creep almost in a way gives me a way more clear-cut picture of what i could be looking at as opposed to just like a random odd to it it just is what it is Mm -hmm. makes life a lot you got you got to deal you got to understand it and you got to deal with it and incorporate it into like your multi-state strategy Mm -hmm. that's why i think it's important like if you look at things like the number of applicants year over year increasing across the western states and things like point creep that's where i think a multi-state uh, strategy become that much more important. It's not like you can 
count on hunting general season elk in Wyoming every year or even general season Montana combo, you know, elk yeah. combo. Uh, at this point, it takes like multi-state strategy to put together a hunt for every year. And whether I'm hunting elk in Wyoming or this next year, I'm hunting Montana or Colorado, but like you've got to kind of, you've got to have a wider net. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so kind of, I guess, to revisit point creep, I think, again, you, you see those in states that have a, a preference point or a bonus modified bonus point system where they guarantee permits to people with the most points that apply. So you're, you're gonna see it, it's a supply and demand issue. You have more demand, more, more demand than you have the number of permits to, to supply that demand. And then, you know, I think, it's probably worth noting like states that are particularly bad for it. So I think Wyoming's a bad state for point creep. Um, you know, 15 years deep in their elk and there's getting to be far, you know, far and few between good options for those people in that mid tier. Um, Colorado's bad for it. It can be bad. Depends on depends the hunt, on right? Yeah. yeah, it depends on what you want. Yeah, Colorado, I mean, I'm never gonna have a unit two or 10 elk tag. That's okay. You just, you gotta accept it, right? Um, you know, Arizona, Utah have got some hunt structures where they guarantee some permits to people with a lot of points. So it can be bad for those two states. And then I think generally, like, uh, you know, you're just seeing more applicants across the West. And overall, I guess for me, the last thing I would say is just like, be aware of the system, be aware that point creep exists. And the way to deal with that is to have a multi-state strategy and then be really intimately familiar with how the systems work and use the detailed draw odds page to your advantage to help you essentially predict where you can draw from it. Like, like Brandon was saying earlier, there's, there's certain states that you're, you're going to have to build points in if you want to have any skin in the game. Like, you know, like Utah is just one of those states. There's always a chance in the run, random odds, albeit small, you know, but that opportunity does exist. But yeah, you get into you know, into the preference point states and that necessary evil um, that is point creep. Like I said, I think on, on the lower point levels, it just makes things so much more predictable and easy for a guy to plan out my next four or five years. Yeah, you go back into, into point creep and a lot of people take it as a negative. At the end of the day, I personally like states that have a point system. I feel like I get, in, I get to invest um, something into the state. It, whereas a New Mexico, Idaho, I can skip years in those states and I don't feel bad at all. Like, there are some years those two states don't get any money from me. Yeah, and I, I mean, I... Whereas the point yeah. states, they're getting a dime every year, yeah. so... Yeah, and I, I skip Idaho sometimes, but man, I love New Mexico. It's like I'm in Vegas and I'm throwing the dice, you know, and I'm just like, oh, come on, you know, what's... <laughs> What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? You know, you know what I mean. But there's no reward. Yeah, yeah, even sure. even if you're unsuccessful, there's no reward. Whereas yeah. in Nevada, at least they give me a point. Sure. You know, you I I get to move the I get a I get to adjust that number in my my points bank, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but and you see it pay off. Like once you've been in the game, you and you pull a tag that you've been after for two decades you see the benefit in bonus points. You know, and there's way more opportunity than you might think, even with all the number of applicants. There's tons of, tons of opportunity out there. It's amazing. Yeah.